Hey everyone, my name is Jordi Adumi, and I'm a product manager here at Microsoft working on developer experiences on Windows. And today I'm joined by the one and only Mike Greasy. Hey, Mike. Hi, Jordi. I'm Mike. I'm an engineer on the Windows terminal and the Windows command line experience. Awesome. Today, we're going to be talking about a really exciting new feature called sudo for Windows. So if you're familiar with sudo on other operating systems, sudo for Windows is the Windows version of that. Um, it's similar to the way that sudo works on other operating systems, but it is different because Windows is fundamentally different than those other types of operating systems, which are usually uh, Unix like. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to show you how do you enable sudo for Windows? And we're going to walk through the different configuration options. And for each one of those, Mike's going to teach us a little bit about how things are actually working under the hood. So that being said, no more ado, no further ado. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to jump right into it. I'm going to show you how you can enable sudo. So you can enable sudo in the system settings for developers on Windows. And so here you can see the enable sudo command. You can toggle it on or off. And here you can also decide how you want to configure sudo. So you can configure sudo in a new window with input disabled or inline. So those are the options that exist today for how you can configure sudo. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to jump into terminal and we're going to go through each one of those options. If I can open up terminal, we're going to go through each one of those options and we're going to show you kind of how it works. And Michael will, will teach us all sort of what's happening. So the first thing I want to call out is that with sudo config, you can actually see how things are running. So now I can see that sudo config is in force new window, so in a new window mode. And so we'll see exactly what that means shortly. So the example that I'm going to use today is netstat. And so netstat, if you run it normally, you'll see that it requires elevation to run. And so what we can do here is run sudo netstat, and you'll see this UAC. Click yes to the UAC, and in a new window, this sort of makes sense. So what I'm seeing is the elevated process is running in a new window, essentially. Not the window that I ran sudo in, but in some other new window. And so, Mike, can you explain sort of what has happened here? How is it open in a new window? Um, and sort of how does this work? Right. So for those of you who might not be familiar, you know, when you run a command line application on Windows, it kind of just attaches to the console that you are uh, already running in, right? So if you're running CMD and then you launch, you know, your text editor then they're kind of sharing the same console window, right? But when you want to run something elevated on Windows, like if you wanted to use run as, uh, the system's going to create a separate second console window. And that console window is going to be running elevated, and that's going to be attached to your elevated command line, right? So this is kind of the same way that the new window mode of sudo works, is it just kind of creates a second elevated console window, and it doesn't reattach the existing console window. That's not really okay. what people want, though, Jordy, is it? No, it's not. But just to double click on that, like this is a separate console window is what you're saying. So this elevated yeah. thing is separate. OK, that makes sense. No, that's not really how it works on other operating systems. That's kind of annoying. That feels sort of similar to what I do today, which is I go to the start menu. I right click. I open terminal admin. Then I either navigate to the directory that I was just in, which is a hassle, or I can run in this case, netstat is kind of directory agnostic, if you will. So I could run it like that. But that's not the way that I would want to, to run it personally. And so that's kind of where the other two configuration options come into play. And so we showed that you could change the configuration options from the settings, but you can also do it directly from the command line, which is exciting. So if you do sudo config dash dash enable, and in this case, we're going to go to the next configuration option, which is disable input. What's interesting here is if I click enter, you're going to notice that you need to run it as administrator. If only there was a way that we could run elevate something from the command line really easily. But we know that there is. So we can run sudo sudo, kind of fun, uh, disable input. And if I click enter, you'll get the UAC. I'll click yes. And what you'll see is it launched sudo in a new window. That's basically because we had it in the forced new window. Um, configuration before, but now if I type in sudo config, you'll see that sudo is currently in disable input mode, which is really cool. So now we're in disable input mode. We're in a new mode, which is disable input. So let's see what the behavior of netstat is if we do that. So netstat still requires elevation. I guess nothing's changed there. Sudo netstat, and now I get the UAC. I click yes. Now this is more like it. This is cool. So now the netstat stuff, the stuff that I want to see is actually showing up in the same window. So how how are we accomplishing this? How does that work? Well, this is where 
pseudo kind of gets a little bit more complicated. And instead of us launching it into a new console window, what we're doing is we're elevating a second instance of sudo itself. And then we're using that admin version of sudo to talk with the unelevated version of sudo. And mm. we're, we pass some command line args and some environment variables and stuff like that. And then we use the unelevated sudo and we just attach to the console that it is using. So then when okay. the elevated sudo wants to spawn its child process, it inherits the console from the unelevated sudo. And so they can all share the same console window and they can all talk to each other. Gotcha. So I'm seeing here in this diagram, they're all connected to the same console window is what you're explaining. And we do mm -hmm. this using RPC, right? So RPC is remote procedure call, which is inner process communication protocol for processes to talk to mm -hmm. each other. And so what are we actually doing with the RPC? I see it's going from this unelevated pseudo to this elevated pseudo. What are we what are we sending exactly to make this possible? Right now, we're not sending all that much information. We're mostly just sending the process ID of the unelevated pseudo itself and uh, possibly some environment variables or console handles if you have it redirected. Um, OK. Things like that, yeah. OK, makes sense. The last thing that I'm noticing here is I'm assuming this is sort of like the output and this is the input. And so this is connected to the console, but we were talking about disable mm -hmm. input mode, right? So can you explain what's the disable input? Like, why is it called disable input? Well, when you're running an elevated uh, command line application in an unelevated window, that's fundamentally not necessarily a super secure environment, right? right? Any application right. can send keystrokes to an unelevated window. Right. So disable input mode is a way of kind of mitigating a lot of the risk there. By manually running the command with the input pipe uh, closed, then gotcha. your application, you know, netstat in this case, or CMD or whatever, it can't read keystrokes from the input pipe. And so a malicious application can't, you know, start sending keystrokes to it. This is better for, you know, when you want to run a one-off uh, command and you just want to, it, it's not going to ask you for more input. Like if you're just creating a new VM, you just want to run that. You don't need to provide more input. Um, and that totally. kind of mitigates a lot of the security risks. Totally makes sense. So like for Netstat, for example, there's no input, like there's no interactivity for me for the input side of things. So mm -hmm. it makes sense. Like with disable input, it kind of just worked the way that I'd imagine it would work more similar to how sudo works on other operating systems. OK, mm -hmm. gotcha. All right, so now I'm going to go to the last configuration mode. So once again, if I do sudo sudo config enable, and this last mode is called normal, or it's also known as oh, UAC, of course. It's also known as the inline mode. So this normal mode or inline mode is the last and third configuration option, which is kind of what you were just explaining, Mike. This is the option that has the input actually attached still. So you could still type in keystrokes and interact with the elevated process, which is pretty neat. And so this is probably most similar to those uh, pseudo instances on, on other operating systems. Um, it probably behaves the most similarly. So once again, if we do netstat, again, it's going to tell me I can't. And if I do sudo netstat, I get the UAC, I click yes. And so in this case, since there's no input, like we were just talking about, the normal inline mode behaves pretty much identically, at least from the user's perspective, as the previous version. But you can imagine an instance where there was some sort of interaction where I might have to enter um, a name or enter a number to do something with an elevated process. And that, if you have processes like that, you want to be running in normal or inline mode. Is that correct? Yeah, like if you wanted to do sudo cmd just so you could have an elevated shell, you're going to want it in inline mode. It's not going to work in disabled input mode. You know? Gotcha. Makes sense because there will be no no valid input. OK, awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I think I think that was awesome. This is really, really cool. I'm really, really excited for this feature. And thank you so much for explaining all the details. Um, that's great. Of course. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for watching. We really hope that you enjoy this feature. We're really excited to be um, shipping this feature soon in a Windows coming near you. So uh, stay tuned for more information over the next coming months. Uh, and thank you all very much.